Hello and a big welcome to Trends this week, a week uh, when we celebrate a man, a legend, a consummate musician who without a doubt, as anyone will attest, uh, was blessed and so, so very talented and that was of course in Tatere Piri. He was always in good spirits and always laughing and he was here with me in studio just last year, optimistic and looking forward to 2017 as this is the year he would celebrate his 50th year in the music industry. But sadly, his final curtain call came unexpectedly, it seems, this past Wednesday. So yeah. Yeah, um, this day, this Saturday, and everybody, I think, everywhere in the country is celebrating a man who lived his life fully as an amazing, amazing, talented, and um, awesome, awesome man. May he rest in peace. Uh, Dada Ray was scheduled to perform at Rocking the Daisies Music Festival later this year. Um, but yeah, sadly, as I mentioned before, uh, Ray Chikapa Piri passed away this past Wednesday after being diagnosed with lung cancer. The 70-year-old South African jazz legend was a founding member of the Cannibals in the 70s. And after they broke up, the legendary and hugely influ influential Afrofusion band Stimela came to be. Um, Ray will be granted a special provincial funeral next week. And uh, this in honor of his contribution to South Africa's iconic musical catalog that will without a doubt live on and influence many generations to come. Love in you has taught me. A musical legend who used his music to rally against apartheid. His passing earlier this week hit music lovers from here at home and abroad hard. The 70-year-old founder of the band Stimela succumbed to lung cancer. Since the band started in the music scene, it continued to be a household name conceiving gold and platinum selling albums like Fire, Passion and Ecstasy, Look, Listen and Decide, as well as People Don't Talk, So Let's Talk. As a solo artist, Ray Chika Papiri worked with well-known American musician Paul Simon in his Graceland project, which helped South African musicians make a name for themselves abroad. Piri has received many awards in recognition for his contribution in the music industry. One of these is the Order of Ikamanga in Silver. This was to honor his contribution to the South African music industry and the successful use of art as an instrument of social transformation. May his soul rest in peace. Wow. And uh, yeah, so this is uh, an interview that I did with him, my last interview. This was uh, around early September last year. Take a look. I have in studio a phenomenal, legendary musician whose music career began way back in the 70s, probably even before. Uh, one of the founding members of the band, popular until today, Mr. Ray Chikapa Piri. Oh, fantastic to have you here. Thank you so very much for coming to today. Thank you for having it's me. It's a pleasure to see you here and you're still looking so good. We were talking about this off air that the Golden Years seemingly are treating you well. I guess it comes with the territory because yeah. I'm a happy person. Once yeah. you're happy, everything turns out beautiful. Sure. I hate being pensive. Yes. Or if I'm pensive, then I'll start having lines on my face. But right. even though yeah. there are lines on my face, each and every line tells a story. Of course, of course. And yeah. that story, I mean, from the 70s, from the time when you started out in this industry at a t tumultuous time, a very, very, you know, the time in South Africa and the mood for musicians was absolutely, I mean, we can't even fathom some of the things that you went through. Tell us about, you know, the coming together of your, your brothers as the, the group Stimela and what it was that drove you guys. I would say that um, the need for knowledge, the love for music, and the respect for the people is what 
created Stimela. Mm. As the cannibals, we were a group of the 70s, but I started in the 60s, late 60s, 1967. Yeah. Next year I'll be celebrating 50 years of being a and professional musician. So wow. I'm telling my age. Are we invited? Are we invited to the celebration? <laughs> you will be. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I guess it's the volition that came from our need to want to be the voice of the voiceless that gave us hope. Mm. And we learned a lot. And so, fortunately, South Africa gave us a lot of ideas. South Africa gave us ears. Yeah. South Africa gave us. Uh, the stage to perform and say the things that we right. said. Until up to now, we're still saying that. Mm. Mm. Looking at some of the videos yes. that are playing right now and listening to that, I think every single generation has, whether it was on a Sunday, whether it was on a Saturday, at their home, their uncles, their dads, this is music we grew up on. What do you feel when you see this um, and you say, wow, you know, I'm still alive, I'm still here? I count my blessings and I'm thankful that I've had the opportunities to have uh, touched a lot of people's hearts and I'm still touching a lot of people's hearts, mm -hmm. still staying in their minds. Yep. Um, I'm accessible. Yep. I don't need no bodyguard. <laughs> I'm me. Yes. I was created by the nation. Fantastic. So I will always be accessible to them. Yes, it makes me feel a little bit uh, shy. <laughs> I talk too much. <laughs> because I get yeah. paid for talking too much. Of I wouldn't course. be a singer if I wasn't. <laughs> of course, of course. And we're so grateful for that. And he was so, so much fun. May your soul rest in peace in that day, Piri. We're going to an ad break. Come back after this. Meteorite hit the Earth two million years ago, creating an enormous impact of crater, about 10 kilometers in diameter, near Federford in the Free State, a hundred kilometers southwest of Johannesburg, now known as the Federford Dome, a South African World Heritage Site. The meteorite is said to have been larger than Table Mountain and caused a thousand megaton blast of energy. The impact would have heated about 70 cubic kilometers of rock and have increased the Earth's oxygen levels to a degree that made the development of multicellular life possible. The world has about 130 crater structures of possible impact origin. The Fredford Dome is the largest in the world, followed by Sudbury Crater in Canada and the Chicloop Crater in Mexico. Well, a very good morning and welcome to AMU's Live at 1000 Hours across all Central Africa regions. A fitting send-off for a revolutionary giant. A life dedicated in service of the people. The result means that the swallows are out of the ABC Multiple League and drop to the amateur fourth tier of South African football, the SAB League. Tune in on AM News every Saturday and Sunday from 10 hours. Welcome back, you're still watching Trends. Um, and now I'm about to speak to two men who knew the man, the legend, um, the person, actually, the day-to-day -day person that Ndate Ray Piri was. I'm joined um, by hybrid, uh, by Ndate Jabu uh, Sibumbe, as well as Isaac Mchali, and they were also uh, members of uh, Stimela. Welcome to Trends, gentlemen. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, yeah, a difficult uh, few days it's been for everyone. But I think for, you know, both of you gentlemen, um, it's been uh, bittersweet uh, thinking and remembering and maybe living through all the many, many decades that you knew uh, Omre. Tell us uh, your most fondest memories of him. And uh, if any one of you saw him in the last few days, um, tell us about that too. Maybe, Abra Isaac, start with you. Um, uh, 
I'm sure you will. Thank you so very much, and Dr. Isaac Mchali, and you were one of the drummers who played for the Cannibals, and he just took us through a bit of a, a history, uh, going back in time to the days, how they got together, and how Omre was always, always swift with the music. It's so amazing. Right now, watching uh, Nana Koyote as well as uh, Omre both departed, um, Dade Nana, in uh, 2010. Um, Dade Jabusibumbe. Yes. Uh, tell us about, you know, what Omre was like uh, off the stage, you know, when you traveled with him, when you went through many things, family, growing up, um, the apartheid years even, at a time when, you know, music was so difficult, but all of you were very passionate about what you were doing. Tell us about um, uh, Ndate Pire, please. Uh, okay, so far, I'd like just to go a little bit back, uh, back on, because me, and Ray, we were, we were rivals in terms of like before we came together. Oh, really? He was a dancer. Yes, he was a dancer to a group of mm, much above Queens. And uh, they were together with Isaac. And Amina was also a dancer on the other side, which means on the east and, and on the west coast, back in Bombela in the street. Okay. I was staying somewhere like. Which means there was a lot of mud, and now I was on the other side where by these are among which means mangoes and stuff like that. And then uh, what happened? He was a good dancer, and also I was a roadie with this thing with the other band. After he split with that band, he and I became a guitarist and a lead singer, and I was, I was the calling the cannibals. Yes. And I mean, on the other side, I was just still a roadie. Until my cousin John Muriel came to Nesprit and recruited me to come and join a group called Mitchell's and Girls under Robert Bupate stable. And then that's when I was playing drums and stuff like that. Right. And, uh, but before that, also, I forget, I was their dancer as the cannibals. They recruited, when Ray was playing guitar, I became a dancer for them. But then shortly, and then I had to come back to Jolek and Moto was up with my mother and then from there I joined a local band Ikato Hall. Okay. Uh, it, it called the Moat and that and that. And then we yeah. ended up like forming our own thing as Timela. Yes, let's talk about those we, golden years as Timela. Yeah, we, we form our own thing as Timela. So, but the best thing after forming our own thing as Timela in nineteen eighty, we tried some things early late late sixties to late 70s to, uh, to from 60s until late 60s, uh, so, and then we started our own thing and then it failed and then somewhere late 70s and then that's when we, we came together to form a band Stimela but he started as like fashion music and stuff like that but apart from that he was the I think a big brain whatever mastermind in all everything because I remember when we joined Galo he came with the, the, the idea of we record the first recording uh, TV and a DVD at Market Theatre. And I remember Carlos, he didn't want that. He managed to convince them somehow and they ended up 
giving us money, like loan, a loan working against our royalties. But the whole thing became a success and we were the first band. And another thing, he came with a lot of ideas to us, style of eating, respect eating, and he was presenting that, or I want to you, like, Akuluma, like, with a sense of humor, because he was more like a comedian. But he was disciplined, and stuff like that, according to a track. And that was then back. And how do we dress with our special shop called Hebrew, it's called Trouser House. Okay. It is a Trouser House. Trouser House. Trouser House, okay. Yeah, can you invite me to borrow now? So Isaac would dress according to his body and his style, me, same thing, but we presenting Stimela. Because he didn't have that idea in uniform, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, and even if you check the way he was writing relics, lyrics, had a composer, like, he came with that unfinished story. Unfortunately, we did that, and Ratora, and then right there, the accident, official, that accident in 1987 is the one who considered this passing out. Cut out, to Lago, the Lansing Tahaya, between the lungs and liver, and then because he was a heavy chain smoker like me, and then because he had that cancer. Oh, and then oh, oh, another and the, thing, yes, is, yes. Uh, because all of us were like heavy, heavy chain smokers. But just to go back and tell you why it was Dimela, we had problems while we were trying our things, problem to next grade, trying to do some shows with Brastis Kekane, and when we got stuck there, we came back with the train. And then we came back under, they were. Isaac and Ray, they were under stable of Mavutela, under Western Kosi, and they are, they are taking the late Mparanyane, and I was now with the movers. And then we tried the same thing, going to Taung and all that, we got stuck, and then we came back, and then with the train. And then again, Ray had to go back, me and Isaac, to go and plead with Carlo to record us. They said, no, uh, we don't, and then he said, our name is Kimela. They said, no, Mongen Gema, He's got uh, that name as Stimela Samsung as a as a track. We tried the other name, Rufaro, they said Rufaro was the uh, uh, big state of township in Rodesha then. I think now even now in Arar. They said no uh Brahoskik Mabusa is got the label that's called that. You know? And then oh. lastly he came up with the he predicted something while we were doing the live recording at Maketa. He, he, he branded the live recording as child of the soil, think again. Yeah. And then, the thing. And then he came up while he was playing the recording, and then all of a sudden he saw the whites and the Indians and the colors coming to the show. Mm. And then he came with this Rainbow Nation thing. Before our... Brajabu, 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 may, may I please, unfortunately, I do have to cut you there. We are just out of time. But everything that you talk about, my goodness, I wish you were sitting here with me in studio and, you know, taking notes because it's such a long and, you know, a, a very colorful history that all of you created as band members. You talk about the fashion, you talk about you boys, uh, well, as boys when you were younger, Bunta um, Temoholo to me, you know, went uh, and you were buying fashion and you were very, I mean, the video everything is just there where all of you and your character um you know your personalities come through with and Ray there as well being very very funny and the dancer that you speak of thank you so very much that was and isaac and charlie and also jabusi bumbe who are um who grew up with and Ray and were also part of the band stimela thank you so very much for your time and condolences to the ray piri family and everybody who knew and loved his music so the 38th durban international film festival kicked off this week with the opening night taking place at the legendary playhouse the opening night film serpent from director amanda evans wooed audiences when a romantic escape turns into the ultimate reckoning the ultimate moment of reckoning rather our producer nadia adams parton attended the opening take a look at the highlights durban in july isn't all about equestrian the durban international film festival kicked off this week and is in its 38th year the festival brings together filmmakers from across the globe and networking deals are the order of the day for the week to come. The Playhouse Company was the venue of choice for this special evening, where the who's who of South African film were in attendance. 
This year, among other themes, is a special focus on women-led films and African content, with some enthralling performances from strong female characters and world-class female directors. I think um, as compared to previous years, um, the level of, of the competition is actually going high and the standard is going high as well. Um, if, you, if you look at this year, most of the screenings are taking place in, in areas where we've never been to. So we're actually venturing into townships, we're venturing into um, the Shabins. We want everybody to know about South African films. Majority of films that are being screened are South African. Yes, we have other African um, films, we have international films as well, but then we are celebrating our South Africanism, combining that with African um, films as well. So where we're headed, it's isolated, dangerous. Full of all the creepy, crawly nature stuff. Well, there's no phone reception for a start. See the sign for Suicide Gorge? Yeah. Follow that sign. Are you serious? The opening night film showcases the extensive talents of women in film. Serpent from genre director Amanda Evans is a dark art house wow. movie which Look thrilled audiences with Worth its it, first right? screening. It's a dark psychological, very contained thriller about a husband and a wife who are trapped in a tent with a snake and they have to decide how they're going to get out and who's worthy of living. So it really is, it's a very nuanced thriller. My whole point of making it was a reaction against the sentence, two people stuck in a tent with a snake. You comes out, snakes on a plane, Samuel Jackson, anacondas. No, this is not this. This is a very nuanced tale about two people, a tragic love story, and a snake that is not a villain. Actually, the evil inside the tent is not the snake at all. Africa has risen to the occasion this year with a significant upsurge in not only the number of submissions, but also the quality of the films. The Durban International Film Festival officially welcomes the 38th edition, which will run from the 13th to the 23rd of July 2017. Our very own SAFTA winner experiences DIF for the first time this year. This is my first ever invitation to come to the Devon Film Festival. So I'm very excited to be here and I look forward to seeing other people's work. You know, up and coming um, filmmakers, we always look to already established or already people in the industry who are making moves. So I look forward to networking, seeing people's films, being inspired and making my own film very soon. Um, I think that's the least I can do as a SAFTA winner. Awesome things happening uh, in Durban uh, until the 23rd of July. That's the 38th annual Durban International Film Festival. And so in medieval times, a jester was employed by a nobleman or monarch to entertain him and his guests, right? So the heavyweights of South African comedy are by no means jesters, but they certainly do entertain and they do it well. Uh, the Kings and Queens of Comedy is taking place next week, Saturday, at uh, the Santon Convention Center for a show of hysterical proportions. And I have uh, with me in studio one of the people who will be on the lineup, a comedian who has done uh, quite a lot um, on television, um, on the stage, and uh, yeah, humble beginnings, but look at you now. <laughs> how are you, Kanye I'm Sabuna? I'm right. thanks a lot, and mm. how are you? I'm good, thank you. Mm -hmm. I've never actually met you before, but I've seen you a couple of times on stage, and uh -huh. we've seen you on television as well. For people who don't know, when I say you are really from humble beginnings, but there was always this comedy thing, tell people about who you are and where you're from. Um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm Kanye Sabun, as you have said, I'm a stand-up comedian, I'm a former teacher, I used to teach in the Eastern Cape, but I got... I want to talk about that because I don't believe you. <laughs> I got to, uh, to comedy through So You Think You're Funny, yes. which was a show that played on SABC One Some years 2009. ago. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it was my first attempt actually to take a microphone and try to entertain people. But, but how did you get there? Because obviously there were ads and, you know, um, it was advertised. There's this competition. David Gow is looking for comedians all over the country. People come and audition. Is that the same year that Poor Pops was on? No. It's not the just same. Just before him. Just before him. Okay. Yes, so so him. who then said to Mare, Kanisa, I think you should enter this? A few friends actually yeah. told me to. Enter Did you the know commission. you were funny, or is it a case I of they? I've always known. <laughs> you always known. known as a kid. So, oh man! But now talking about you being a teacher, what subject were you teaching, and how <laughs> did they take you seriously? <laughs> I used to teach English and geography. Yeah. They did take me seriously, actually. When you're up there... There were times for, for us to joke, yes. but there were times for us to work. Okay. So they had to differentiate. But today we were working, no yeah. jokes. No jokes. Yes. Okay, very interesting. Mm -hmm. And so you come to Johannesburg, 
um, you enter this competition. Take us through, I mean, did they put you through your paces? Did you think, was it a different world? Because for you, I don't know, are you big on improv or do you write down? I write a lot. You write I a lot. Do, okay. Yeah, just a bit of improv here and there, but I'm a writer. I prefer writing. Mm. Uh, the, the nicest thing about this journey of me going to So You Think You're Fun is that I didn't even know that you was going to lead me to another career. Yes. It was just me trying to showcase that I'm a funny person. Yeah. Uh, I saw this ad uh, for So You Think You're Fun on, uh, on a, in a newspaper and my friends called and then another cousin of mine called, can you say, please go to this? Yeah. No, 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 people have to know about you. They have to know. Yes. So and then I'll, acting? Acting, yeah. <laughs> it's another one that just came Joe, without yeah. me expecting. I, I, wasn't, I didn't even audition for Usa Stop Light. Yes. Usa Stop Light, they called me like we want you here yeah so that was wonderful eh? but that's the thing i mean <laughs> yeah. uh, you know manda and the team uh, yes, you know they put yes. together always mm. a very interesting group of people and a rainbow actually nation of talent mm -hmm. and always their shows work amazingly well so here you are um the comedy circuit not very kind to women but that is is it slowly or is it quickly changing? Considering that Dumi Murake, who was also on um, the lineup for Kings and Queens of Comedy, mm -hmm. you know, last year won the Comic of the Year at the Savannah Choice uh, Comics Award. Yeah, I, I think it's changing. It's, it's changing, changing gradually. Yeah. You need patience in this industry, mm. otherwise you're going to crack. Uh, I think since, I, I, you remember I also won an award in 2015. That's yes. right. I think since then I've seen lots, lots of changes, but I wouldn't say lots, but... Mm. Okay, but gradually. It's happening. It's happening. It's it's happening. happening. Yeah. yeah. There are changes. People are trying, are, are, are beginning to accept us as their equals. Yeah. Because if you are funny, you're funny. If you're funny, it's you're funny. And that's the thing. You don't even have to be like the guys, do yes. you? What do you, I mean, what kind of topics do you talk about? Is it, well, there's lots of politics, I suppose, that people sometimes throw into their sets. Um, and otherwise, it's their own life stories or people they grew up with. What kind of comedian are you? I'm a comedian that talks about my life basically okay. my life the funny side of coming from eastern cape and having to adjust in Joburg, my life as a teacher and now being on a stage having a bigger audience still teaching though yeah but a bigger audience yeah. but a lot through humor yeah and i lot i talk a lot about things i see on tv okay things are that i think so right relevant. now what do you see on tv that makes you say you know what i'm gonna write that into my set Oh, I talk. I, I on TV. There's never a shortage of things to talk about. You, wa you watch news and you see stuff. Yeah. And I remember I was. I had a video about three weeks back that mm. went viral. Mm. I was imitating the pastors from this church. Go fire, fire. Gosh. And a few days after the video, I saw offices burning in in Joburg and another yeah. office in Bishop. I was like, ah, now the, my fire, fire. I think yeah. I'm the number one suspect. Yes. <laughs> Well, no, 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 I don't think so. Yeah. But as, as many people have come to say, comedy is no joke. You are a yeah. reflection of what is going on in society. So next week, Saturday, the kings and queens of comedy take their place um, uh, in Santon at the convention center. Yes. Tickets are at CompuTicket, if I'm correct. Yes. And tell us about a few of your uh, colleagues who will be there as well that we can look forward to. Yes, we have uh, Tum Murage, uh, Trace Oliver. We have Ndumiso Lindi. Pop Pops, right. Trevor Gumby, I think Gumbi, is on there as well. Yes, yeah. and Rob Van Fieren. Jeez. So many big guns, so many big guns. So it's a mix, and all of you obviously bringing something very different. Tracy Oliver, I think, is there as well, um, and uh, Joey Resdin. Yes, Joey, Joey as Rustin, well. Yes, the MC Absolutely trend. fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I know you don't do a lot of improv, but can you do something for us? <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, I can just say that I'm a teacher. Uh, I always say I'm a failed teacher because that's why I'm here. Why else would I behave if I didn't fail? I always say you, have, you know you have failed as a teacher when you look back at your career and the only memories you have are your memories of being locked outside the school gate together with your learners and make it, making it awkward for the colleagues to shout at the learners because you're standing there with the learners. They're like... <laughs> <laughs> now we're <you're> late. <laughs> now we're late. And you never know yeah. which side to support when the arguments erupt, yeah. erupt. Because the students say, open the gates, our parents paid. You're like, open the gates. Up. No, no, my parents didn't pay for me yeah. to be here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, very true. And very interesting. Like I said, do any of your students like hit you up on Twitter or Instagram to say, lots oh, no, and I remember lots. you? Facebook, actually. Facebook, <laughs> okay. Oh, yo, yo, those inboxes. Oh, yeah. I remember, you always knew. Yeah. And they're so very excited when they saw me on 
on sister bla fantastic yeah, ma'am, ma'am, yeah. Ma'am. Ma- they still call you ma'am even yeah okay. they still do well, but most of them don't can you anymore <laughs> thank you so very much for coming for here to studio me. today and uh, we're going to an ad break join me after this Water wise, water is an essential need. The scarcity of it could lead to loss of many lives, including livestock, plants, and much more. It requires us to use it sparingly and responsibly in times of need, failing which our taps and sanitation will not function. For more on water and weather issues, stay tuned to News Today, every Friday at quarter to five Central African time. SABC News, making you water wise. The Law Society has slammed notices sent to four universities to jack up standards or risk losing their LLB courses. The Council on Higher Education issued a stern warning to the universities to conform within six months. I think it will affect the university. I think uh, um, outside, the, uh, outside the law faculty there's a funding issue. It's been 112 years since Enoch Sontonga died as a relatively unknown composer, choir master and teacher. But today his legacy lives on through his greatest composition, Ngosi Sigeleli Africa. For all your news updates, stay tuned to Your World from Monday to Sunday. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Trends. And so in keeping with comedy, it is already that time again where comedians vote for their fellow comedians to ultimately determine who will go on to win or to receive uh, the prestigious Waldo Savannah CCA statuette. Um, and that is one of the awards uh, at the Savannah Comedy Choice Awards this year in their seventh year. They are the biggest and uh, highest accolades uh, a comedian can win in South Africa. And uh, this is the first year that the awards have introduced the Savannah Pan African Comic of the Year Award. The nomination announcement was out at Catsies in Rosebank this week. Uh, take a look at the highlights and congratulations to everyone who's been nominated. Hundreds of comedians registered and after thousands of votes, the nominees have been announced for the 2017 Savannah Comics Choice Awards. It's in its seventh year and I, and I think there are, there are now 11 awards. It keeps growing. Uh, what we try and do is make sure that the awards that we have um, between them uh, accurately paint a picture of where the comedy industry is as decided by the comedians. It's amazing. It feels amazing actually. I can tell people I've done something with my life now. Now all those people in my family that are going, you need a real job, I can show them an award if I win one. I feel great, man. Uh, I feel honored. I feel like my comedy friends came through with me and voted me for Four times, four categories. I feel great too. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling excited. I'm happy that my colleagues felt I was worthy to be nominated. It would feel better if I win the award. Of course, if I don't, I won't be mad. It has been the awards vision for many years to expand into Africa and take the continent's talent to a global stage. And it's the first year that the awards have introduced the Savannah Pan-African Comic of the Year Award. As the only international comedian in my country and with only a year in, in work, it's quite a big deal for me. So it's going to really open up a lot of doors for me, trying to host more comics in my country. You know, people view it as a different type of venture for other kids to go up in. You know, that ad that has never been really, but now it's, it's quite a big deal for us here. I'm like, oh, yeah, I, but, okay, so. <laughs> then I see somebody falling down and he goes, fire! Okay. So I was like, okay, let, let me just join in. So I'm there and he comes to me and goes, fire! Okay, okay. This is not fun. <laughs> then he goes again, fire! I'm like, my man, I'm not going to say this. What do you feel about the fact that this year the Comics Choice are celebrating you and giving you the lifetime achievement? Happiest man in the world. You can't believe how wonderful it is to see young blood coming into the industry. It's so exciting. I still want to say and say thank you to Trevor Noah. Because after Trevor Noah went to the US, the whole world took a, a direction to South Africa. To check out the 
and now you, you find comedians like Abu Loisokola going overseas, staying in England, you find how much they're going to Montreal to go to two comedy. So uh, it's, it's kind of about like open doors, and after the door is open, go, Baba, go. I down. I do my ten until I die. What am I You are watching SABC trends, and that's a good thing. Especially now that the awards are coming up sometime soon in the near future. So stay tuned and then go to the awards when they happen on the day when they are supposed to happen. And see comedians that you didn't even know comed in South Africa. Oh, wow. Only, only John Christmas and Eric Anson. Congratulations, as I said, to all the nominees and a Lifetime Achievement uh, Award winner, Mr. Cyril Green. He's been at it uh, last year, I think, was Casper de Vries. Absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, looking forward to that. It will be one big, big, big party with uh, all our favorites uh, like Skumba, like Mashabela, like Samari, and, and, and. Anyway, moving on. Um, it's regarded as Africa's biggest representative polo, polo tournament where luxury, uh, fashion, and horses meet. And this week, trends attended the Land Rover African Cup launch held at the prestigious Inanda Club in Santon, where we witnessed the best in fashion and got a sneak peek of what to look forward to when the main event takes place. Now, the prestigious affair will happen on the 20th of August, and uh, we'll see countries like Ghana, Nigeria, Zambia, Zimbabwe, and South Africa battle it out for the big prize. If you're into fast cars, fashion and horses, then the Land Rover Polo event is definitely the place to be at. Known as the Game of Kings all over the world, the equestrian event fuses a game of polo and fashion also takes centre stage. This year, the Land Rover Polo has partnered with some of South Africa's leading fashion designers such as Ger Juwan Kutsia and San Godes. Well, if you think about um, fashion and uh equestrian sports, uh, horse riding, there's always been a long um, association, whether it's show jumping, the races, or polo itself. Um, I myself am, am an advanced rider, I've been riding for the last 35 years, and uh, when the opportunity came, uh, we grabbed with both hands, you know what I mean? So if you think of glamour, if you think of sport, there's a nice combination that always happens with regards to fashion and the equestrian sports. On the day of the event, guests will be treated to a display of elegant and sophisticated garments on the catwalk, which celebrates the beauty of Africa and are inspired by the nature. This is our latest collection. Uh, it's called Summer Love in Africa. If you think of, you know, the mystique of Africa, if you think of, you know, the beautiful colors, we've always used nature as our muse, and uh, that's what this is about. You know, it, it, it celebrates all the wonders and uh, the beauty of Africa. So as the date of the event approaches and you're still wondering what to wear, here's a tip. Think of playful and daring. After all, you're going to play with the horses. You know, polo is a fun event and, uh, you know, you can't dress as if you're going to the office and uh, you've got to do more than just dressing as if you're going to the club, you know. It, 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 it's a, f a flight of fantasy. It's uh, selling dreams. It's about selling the vision of Sangores. And that's what we do, you know. We do go over the top a bit, but uh, that's what we do as designers. Uh, push the imagination, push the limit, and just have fun. It's going to be a fun day, and uh, those who want to be seen will be in Sangores. Don't miss out on this prestigious, world-class polo entertainment fixture from the quality of the thrill of polo matches to the festivities on the sidelines, the fashion experience and the champagne. And so local celebrities pose naked to raise awareness for their chosen uh, charities in Marie Claire's magazine, uh, the 2017 Naked Issue. The Melrose Gallery played host to the auction that was hosted by Marie Claire, of course. And amongst the celebrities who went, uh, yeah, the full Monty, <laughs> Nomza Mombato was uh, chosen as the cover girl for the issue um, for this very worthy cause. Take a look. That's for Marie Claire. An auction of naked celebrity portraits adorning the walls of this gallery. All for a good cause. Proceeds from this public display of these celebrities will go to their various charities. Radio host Tano Tabete, Nicole Fortain, Omutle Gela, Rosette Nwana and performer Moonchild are some of well-known personalities who chose to bear it all. We met up with a few of those who braced the cold to play witness to their photographs being auctioned. 
I am so excited. Firstly, I get naked anyway all the time to a point where my friends will be like, take it down a bit on my Instagram. So by the time I could get naked and know I'm not being raped and it's for a bigger cause, which is for a place that I had nothing supporting, it's just so much greater. Firstly, when I got called to do this, I was so excited because literally a few days even before, I knew that they were shooting it, but I didn't know who they were going to choose. And when I got the call to say that I'm doing it, I was so excited. My initial thoughts were, OMG, how am I going to look? How am I going to look? But honestly, how it came out looks amazing. I love it. And because it's done for charity, for a good cause, I'm all for it. Oh, this is super exciting for me. You get to choose your charity, as I'm sure you know. And then you have to pose naked to kind of prove your work for them. And um, I chose SADAG, which is a South African depression and anxiety group of South Africa. They do such amazing work. They've been working for the past 20 years. They have call centers for anyone suffering from bipolar, suicide um, attempts, um, trauma, anxiety, and of course, um, depression. So it's a wonderful organization. And I was super honored to get naked for the issue. So it was really, really exciting. Munchal's portrait received the highest bid with the price going up to 7,000 rand, while the portrait of Nomza Mombata was sold for 1,610.50. It was brilliant. Uh, I come from, an, uh, from a background where music and the arts was not on. We had to become a doctor or lawyer. Mm -hmm. And my, both my children, they follow music and the arts. So to support a local musician, a local artist, it's brilliant. I love it. Uh, you know what I mean? Just, just getting in, into that that theme of, of local art and doing well. That's, that's what we're all about. I bought Nom Zamo's portrait. As you can see, she's the cover. She's the on the cover issue of Marie Claire. So I'm very, very excited. It's, it really is for a good cause. It's for charity. So it goes without saying that I'm super excited that I actually got the cover the cover personality and it was honestly such a bargain. The campaign was published in Marie Claire's March edition even though the campaign was rolled out in the July issue to coincide with Mandela Day. Well, and there you go. To all the haters who went off at Nomzama because of her toes, how petty can we be South Africa? There she is. She's the cover star of uh, this year's Naked Issue. Congratulations. And yeah, big up to all those who went naked. Uh, we're going to an ad break now. But before that, I have in studio a very, very talented musician. His name is Something Soweto, and he's about to perform uh, now and then. <laughs> I 
Kilimanjaro, majestic and mysterious, 27 climbers, 5,895 meters, 5 days, trekking in honor of Madiba and for underprivileged schoolgirls. In just 5 years, millions of sanitary towels have been distributed countrywide, the target to reach 2 million needy girl children by 2020. It's time that as men, we must actually pick one uh, sanitary pack. We can touch one girl through this initiative. SABC News will again be documenting the arduous expedition. The climbers have one goal in mind. To pledge support for a month's supply of sanitary pads, SMS Jillian or Tabo M to 42513. The South African team hopes to summit Uhuru, Africa's highest peak, on Madiba's birthday, July 18th. one from uh, Samthing Soweto and so the best drama from Grahamstown is currently running in Bramfontein at the Vitz Theatre's 969 Festival so this year's lineup brings relevant thought-provoking and award-winning productions from across South Africa to the Vitz Theatre stages giving audiences carefully selected and diverse pieces which featured on uh, the, the main and the fringe stages at the 2017 National Arts Festival at uh, Grahamstown I'm now in studio joined by the director of uh, Vitz Theatre Geetha Patha and uh, musician Samthing Soweto who is also a part of the festival. Welcome to Trends, the both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Geetha, let me just start with you. Um, and for people who don't know about this amazing festival, for people who can't make it to Grahamstown, cold, cold, one road town, <laughs> Grahamstown, <laughs> tell them about the 969 festival. Well, the 969 is very interesting it's in, in, in that the title 969, it's exactly 969 kilometers really? to Grahamstown, the middle of oh, nowhere. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the festival is really based on on bringing the vibe, um, a selection of plays to Joburg yeah. for a Gauteng audience. And I think we're a much more discerning audience. You know, we're ready Very. For, we <laughs> want more experimental things. Yeah. We're ready to take on fresh approaches. Yeah. So this festival is really curated by myself and something Soweto, you've just heard that sound. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really about bringing dance, music and theatre and lots of comedy as well. Um, during the midst of winter and yeah. the school holidays. Sure, and so turnout has been good. I mean, it's always well received. Um, I know it's not the first year, right, that it's happening yeah. at Vets. It's, and the, so 14th it's the 14th year. It's the 14th year, and I mean, the Grahamstown National Festival is how old? I think Jeez. it's like... Many, many. Many. <laughs> yeah, many, and so that's absolutely fantastic. Oh, so Samkelo, welcome. Thank you. Better known as something. So you are also curator for the festival. No, I'm not. And oh, she, you, you she said that. I was like, wow, this is an amazing <laughs> credit right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, I curate the festival. You curate, and he's one of the, the musicians yes. who yeah. are part of the festival. Yes. Because yeah. the festival, it is theatre, it is comedy, it is music as well. Yeah. So people don't know you and your amazing, amazing, I mean, your CV reads like... It's amazing. For someone as young as you are, you are very talented, one of the original members of the soil. Yes. And you also composed that uh, Joy Cadbury chocolate yeah, yeah. thing that we all love. That beautiful with the song. Two, oh, that song is amazing. <laughs> yeah. With the two babies dancing Ooh. in their mom's tummy. Yeah, yeah. That was you. Yeah, we, yeah. Yeah, As a collective, basically. of course, yeah, of with Bouzé and Dondon Of course, yeah. Oh my gosh. 
Fantastic. And so you are a musician, you are a solo musician, you broke off from the group, yeah. did your own thing, have yeah. been a part of a few other groups. So for people who don't know exactly what kind of music you do, because your style is also very different, mm -hmm. but at the same time there is that signature sound that you have. So yeah. take us through your, your, your history and a bit of you know, what you do. I mean, uh, I started with The Soil. I did that for like six years until The Soil got signed. Yeah. And then I did like a small group band uh, that was based in Melville called The Fridge. Yeah. Um, and they broke away. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, they had to go home and, yeah. and Tusi started a life in, in the States. Yeah. And then I just took a break from sure. there. Yeah, I, I, I didn't do but much. But always apart writing. From, yeah, always I writing, always producing. Artists, yeah, you've worked produced. with Cabo Mo, you've worked with yes. Jimmy, well, Stogie T now, yes. as he calls I mean, himself. My, my most recent work, as yeah. far as uh, writing is concerned, is with the amazing group, the a cappella group called the, the Legacy. Okay. They're from uh, Guamash, who uh, they signed to Sony. So yeah. that was great. It's the the Simba ad, yeah. The the when I wait to a song. Okay. Yeah, I didn't work on that one, yeah. but that's the album. That's the, yeah, okay, that's that I worked album. on. Yeah. Right. Um, and of course, 2014, eight of eleven, eight out of eleven of the Soils, amazing, amazing multi platinum award winning yeah, CD. Yeah. There's the first you, album actually. That's the yeah. 2011. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, I've, I've been I've been at it, and now I just came back from Grahamstown, mm. and it was phenomenal. Won the Standing Ovation Award. And I'm hoping to showcase that at the, the festival, the 969 festival at BIT. Sure. Uh, I'm the main act there. Uh, I have my whole day and uh, a big uh, venue. It's actually scary because the last time I played a venue as big was at the Soito Theatre. Yeah. And yeah, we were able to and fill it up. And you sold that out. Yeah, I did. You did. By and the, everywhere by the you mercy perform. of the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> everywhere you perform, you sell out. Gita, what can people, um, you know, look forward to? Are there dialogues as well after, you know, the, some of the performances? Um, sometimes, you know, you do have where artists want to meet people who watch their stuff and talk about what is it that motivated them? What else is um, on offer at the 969? Well, we do have some discussions, mm. and it's mainly geared at students because let's theatre is on a university campus yeah. and so there are some directors who will be talking to students and audiences after their shows sure. but there's a big variety dance is very big yeah. Sonia Radebez Sabella with her husband Ntlantlo Mishlangu who's the music composer there's Noise Tonight Tickets and how much are they? Well, are they student prices? Are they student friendly? Even if people are not students, can they go there and enjoy a well, student price? Well, I think price? it's certainly cheaper than a meal at Steers yeah. or Stir Kinnikor. <laughs> I mean, sure, you can sure. get to see yeah. something Soweto and his yeah. amazing sound for 100 rand. Yeah. I think there's very little you can get for 100 rand. <laughs> Nowadays, yeah. Uh, so, yes, tickets are at www.webtickets.co.za. Okay. Book online because most of the shows are one-off performances and if you don't catch it, oh you don't get gosh. to see it. When does it end? It started last night yep. with a bang yep. and it goes until the 30th of July. Until, oh, okay, so there's still time. People can still catch it. Yeah. And what's next for you, uh, something? Well, at this point, I really want to fill up that, that venue. Yeah. The Vitz Theatre venue. Sure. Yeah, it's, and you it's will. I think you will. I think that's a given. <laughs> and when is your performance? When exactly is uh, your On date? the 20th. On the 20th. Um, it, I think it's the Thursday. Thursday. It's yeah. the yeah. Thursday. coming Thursday. Yeah. Okay. So Thursday. people can look forward to seeing me and a collective of three musicians, a bassist, a guitarist, and a keyboardist. The same show I did in Grahamstown that won the Ovation Award would be you know, available for them to see. So I, I really uh, wish people... Um, could come in numbers so they can see this yeah sure sure and uh, mus musicians who have influenced you i mean the likes of uh, mira makeba i've heard hold a special place in your heart yeah so so special that when i go back to the to doing theater again next year i think i'll do like a little musical based on her life but you know it's, it's still early days i'm still you know trying out a few songs and whatnot but yeah okay. i mean she is a major influence of mine Fantastic. i mean people who know her voice especially her early work I mean, they, I think they can tell from my voice, yeah. Because yeah. I, I basically carbon copied it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Don't leave our music industry and go overseas at some point. I think you have the makings of what it takes to be someone who will be around for very long. You're still finding your feet. Yeah. You've done amazing work. And even if the band thing hasn't worked, yeah. I think you are on a path. You will find wow. your feet. But keep producing, keep writing, keep doing what you're doing because you have it. Uh, thank you. Gita, oh. thank you so very much. The 969 Festival is currently on um, social media. Where can people also have well, a look at can, stuff? 
get the program on, uh, it's called VITS969 on 969. Facebook. Yep. Or you can go to our web uh, page, www.vits.ac.za cool. forward slash VITS Theatre for the whole program. VITS Theatre, okay. Yeah. We can just Google the 969 Festival. 969 yeah. Festival. Yeah. And this is yeah. Sam Thing Soweto. Thank you so very much, Geetha, uh, for coming you. through um, to Trends as well. Thank you. And yeah, that's uh, the show for today. We are playing out with a video. Uh, as I said, this uh, episode today is also paying homage to another great musician that we had, and that was Ntate Ray Piri. Um, yeah, goodbye, South Africa, and join me again next week. Some people like fine teeth Some people like talking about you and me You know me baby, I'm a lover, not a fighter If I was to fight for your love If I was to fight for your love Your love is so sweet Sweet Sweeter than a candy